hello again and another episode of growing together hopefully you're um, well enjoying these I'm certainly enjoying making them so I'm going to carry on um, if um, I'd love to get some comments from people uh, who are watching say what I could be doing better perhaps or less of or the like anyway for a start let's have a look around uh, the allotment it's second week of October now and it's always a bit of a sad time really because um, all that growth and it's coming to an end now just a few bits and pieces here and there but let's have a look anyway so I've got some cabbages which I've planted in the hope that we'd have something around Christmas <laughs> but they've not done so well I have to say I'm wondering whether you know you're supposed to rotate your crops and I'm wondering whether I've had one set of cabbages out of this plot this year already and they were fantastic they're massive um, and tasty <laughs> but, but I've planted in the same bed in the same year and I'm wondering whether this club root or something because um, I was thinking leave this one from, from brassicas next year but I don't know maybe it's um, club root has come and they, I mean one or two of them are looking alright I don't know if you can make it out but they're looking a bit kind of stunted there's just a couple of them that look like they might make it but you never know now that one in the corner hmm I don't think that one's going to do anything and it looks as if it's a slug victim mind you rather than club root but well, let's have a look let's see how things go and we'll just leave it I think one thing about allotment life you have to learn to be patient now then if you saw earlier videos you'd have seen that this was full of courgettes butternut squash um, everything basically <laughs> it was a bit of a mishmash and it ended with my offering for the bees really well the squirrels have started to take an interest in these things these sunflowers now because I suppose they're setting seeds aren't they the squirrels need something to eat so unfortunately there you can see they're helping themselves well why not still some opening though is a, you know it's just a really strange time of year I don't know if you're finding the same thing if you're growing some things are really successful some things just never had a chance well there's a beauty up there that's been totally stripped of its seeds hope you can see that against the sun but anyway So it's an offering for the bees, it's an offering for the squirrels, I suppose. And coming up to Halloween, the only thing that we have left in here is that, I mean, to me, massive cucumber of cucumber. What am I talking about? <laughs> Pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, well, it is early. It's quite a size that for me so we can leave that for um, another few weeks maybe Halloween time the few lettuce I've got left oh dear all gone to seed they're chicken feed basically beautiful colours but I think they're a bit too bitter once they get to this stage. There's the seed head. The 
This is Kai Chai. Chinese vegetable. Nice and healthy. Either end of the bed I've um, I've covered in horse muck, uh, ready for the winter. The idea is stop that, <laughs> but never mind. More, what's it called? Kai Choi. And a lesson here. You need to learn, I need to learn, to be taking these things as they get ready rather than waiting and waiting and being perhaps too patient. So looking at this celery, it's past its best now. It's a shame really because it's gorgeous stuff. I still use it for soup and things like that, but ah. high and actually uh, tied off all the individual plants in there. It must have been one hell of a job. But we'll see where that one goes. Another couple of beds ready for winter. And the kale just keeps giving and giving. It's curly leaf kale, black kale, kale, uh, kale Nero, I think that one's called. It's supposed to be a super vegetable. I don't know if I'm that keen, but having said that, I suppose if it's that healthy, you should eat it. <laughs> this is chard. Bright lights, and it certainly is, if you can see, make out that red there, that's beautiful. And somehow we've got companion planting, whether it was planned or not, I don't really know with those nasturtiums. And I think that could be sorrel, those three down there, but it also could be charred. I, I, I have to admit, I didn't make a note of what's went in here as such taking the broccoli out because it all's gone to seed and here we had all the sweet corn we had a load of sweet corn but it was that white sweet corn that has odd colours here and there and I don't know if I like it as much as the normal stuff that you'd buy but Anyway, it's been eaten. That's the main thing. And another pumpkin. Not quite as big as the other one, but it gives us a couple. <laughs> and then there's something really interesting, but, well, to me, it's interesting, maybe not to you. Um, that's a courgette, which we didn't spot was growing through the gap in a pallet which is around the um, compost. The poor things just it's carried on growing, but it's talk about pinched. Anyway, let's see what happens with that. The only way I'll get that out is either well, I'm not breaking the wood. I'll have to cut it in situ and take it home. And here we're getting a compost bin back from my um, last video. You might remember I was asking whether this is wise or not to what I've done here. I've planted all of this stuff in this compost bin. And wow, has it just taken off. It's butternut squash, as you've seen there. Another one there. Two more there. I haven't even seen them before. Everywhere I look, there's new ones. And my big thing was my question previously. Has this 
taken all the goodness from the compost bin? I suspect yes. And I'm going to have to do something with that compost next year before I use it in the normal way. But anyway, let's move on. Rhubarb as usual, rubbish. I don't know what I do wrong with this rhubarb. It just, <laughs> it struggles, it just struggles every year. And whatever I do, it, it doesn't pick up. I'm just wondering if I, it's the plants I hope and not me, but it could be me. And here's a butternut squash bed. We've taken a load out of it. There's, they're like flat squashes here, or some of them are. And they're more like um, spaceships. Let's see. I don't know if you can see that one. We've got a few of them at home. I'm just interested to see what High End does with them. Maybe use them as frisbees, I don't know. No, I'm sure she will. I'm sure we'll end up eating them in one guys or another. And again, still flowers coming at this time. So we're getting leaves dying off because it's late in the year, but it's still flowering. And that's the same with a lot of these plants. I really cannot work out what's going on. I think it takes someone greater than myself. Back to the compost bin courgettes. Right. Oh. Let's see. That was our only decent uh, plum <laughs> that we got from this tree. It's two years old. We got a couple of plums grew on it, that was all. But then a few days and it was absolutely covered in little tiny green fly things and they've sucked everything out of everything and just made it, well, you couldn't eat the couple of plums that had just been left there. Strawberries for next year. And I'm actually, well, see what you think, but I'm beginning to think I might get rid of the strawberry bed because it takes up a full bed for 12 months and produces fruit for about, if you're lucky, six weeks. I'm just not sure about, um, I know it doesn't look like I'm limited for space, but I think probably it's it doesn't justify its uh, space. I, I like strawberries, but I don't, well, let me know what do you think. Are they worth it? Do you take that into consideration yourself? And what have you decided? If anyone's decided to keep them or not keep them, I, I don't know. Now then, talking about the uh, compost jungle, here's another jungle. It was seven pots, as you can see before, and it had melons, cucumbers, too much really, I, I, I overdid it, I, I realised. But five of them now have come to an end. Just leaves these three front ones, and, and here's the fruit from these things is not something I've come across before. Right, let's see if I can get that into focus. I think they're Chinese and they're called, well, I don't know what the botanical name for them is, but uh, my wife, who is Chinese, says that they, in China they're known as hairy melons. They're not sweet like a normal melon, but they're used in um, stir-fry. So, I've had them and, well, 
a bit neutral really if I'm honest but again it's producing but it's dying off at the same time <laughs> I don't know I'm just confused now this new life it's various types of mixed lettuce red and this is the light you buy at the uh, supermarket with already bagged and I'm going to give this a go um, perhaps later I'll do a short film uh, putting these into pots to grow them on a bit before I put them out but for the time being all I've done was filled a tree full of compost sprinkled the seeds on the top and here we are there's lots and lots and lots of plants there and I can keep them for growing on during the winter and give them to my neighbours who I think at this time of year or later especially anyone's glad of anything that you can grow and here's another Chinese plant do you know what that is? I don't, I haven't got a clue High End doesn't know what it's called either, but quite impressive leaves as a kind of maroon and they're all variegated, do they call that, on the edges. And here's the mystery, gift, hmm, do you know what that is? It smells like, I wonder if it's lavender or? I, I, I don't know, I'm at a loss, but anyway, that's that. Letting all these uh, gladioli and the like die back. And then I'll chop the tops off and hopefully we'll get some next year. But look at this. I've forgotten what bulbs these are, but it's October and they're growing again. They've already produced flowers once this year and now there we go, more. I, I don't know, maybe they'll die off when the frost comes, I'm, I'm not sure. Beautiful rose. Some lilies or lilliums, I think they are, and they're uh, to be cut back. Quick look in the polytunnel. Nasturtium seeds, we picked them up this year. <laughs> I think we just covered them last year with horse muck and thought that would deal with it, but it didn't. It meant that we had companion growth in with lovely flowers in every bed. But anyway, not this year. Oh well, not next year. The red basil, it's plant it on or it's gone. And more red basil. After nearly killing the thyme, now it's actually looking really good now and really healthy pomegranate bush end of the year leaves are turning and a couple of fig trees in the same state yellow leaves I don't know if you're interested but the um, peppermint that I cut back I haven't actually killed which is good and then there we've got the avocados. Still producing fruit, although slowing down now. It just amazes me how the leaves are all dying off, but it's still producing flowers. Oh, don't know, give up. Kiwi. Hoping we get something from that next year. 
and it has a little friend next to it that's I'm not sure whether it's how it's surviving but it's just surviving doesn't promise anything really that one and in the corner some let's see if I can focus in on it ginger really healthy actually that and my project of last week I just wandered and walked through a spider's web all in my face no, never mind never mind as long as the spider doesn't come and eat me I'm not bothered um, the table eBay table if you've seen this before I, I apologize but I just wanted to waterproof it because it's going to end up outside. Looks okay. I paid 16 quid for it. Picked it up locally. Decided to just to give it a, a coat of paint and then it'll probably stand outside. But for the time being, I, I don't need the room in here. So it can stay where it is. And if you look back at any of the other older videos uh, from this season I don't believe the difference this was totally rammed full of greenery and growth and the, the rest but there you go it's um, it's all gone so looking forward to next year I just wonder if you yourselves made any plans like I was saying no more strawberries and I've just bumped my head on the, <laughs> on the polytunnel <laughs> oh, it's not my morning <laughs> at least that's probably killed the spiders that are in my hair from walking through its web earlier <laughs> have you made any decisions about what you're going to grow you're going to grow something different this year I think it's always a, a challenge isn't it let's have a look see what you could grow this you've not done before and something that's unusual let me know in you in the comments if um, if you're going to have a bash at something and I might uh, even have a try at it myself if someone comes up with something that's um, different but I think that's enough for now, but thanks very much for watching and um, hopefully see you next time.